Number can be stated. State of Tennessee, we call your next witness. Let's take on Jesse Browning. Jesse Browning, please. Brown, good afternoon. Come up to where Deputy Smith is standing. Please place your left hand on the Bible. Once you get there, raise your right hand to be sworn, sir. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you were given in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Thank you, sir. Tan, now have a seat here, please, sir. Watch step. Someone need a tan, Deputy Smith. I'm sorry, Mr. Hagerman. I should look first. You may proceed. Right, you, uh, say your name for please. Jesse Browning. Spell it, please. J E S S E B R O W N I N G. Get a little comfortable out there, okay? I think you're going to be up here for a little bit. All right. Uh, you're here to take us on a sort of a little trip through time. All right. Uh, let's start with what your job is. Um, I'm an investigator with the multi agency gang unit and I'm a part of the Memphis Police Department. How long have you been with the Memphis Police Department? Since 2009. I was, got my blue time now. 2010, so I've been on 11 years. And, well, let me ask you this first. In 2010, when this crime happened, where were you, where were you stationed at? Where were you? I working? was Tillman Station my rookie year, uh, midnight shift. Uh, would it be fair to say, Tillman Station, that's like, that's close to us now near downtown, Binghampton. So it's okay. Binghampton. Uh, far away from this crime. Correct. 2010, anything to do with this crime at all? 2010, oh. yes, but. No, no, you in 2010. Oh, no, no. In fact, I think you said you were a rookie officer then. I was. Fast forward six years to 2016. Did you become involved in the investigation of the 2010 murder of Lorenzo Wright? I did. How did you become involved in that? Um, we were tasked by our major to look into the 2010 investigation and kind of see what all had happened and what we could do with it. Was there any way of finding out who murdered Lorenzo Wright? A relook or a reinvestigation, would that be fair? Yes. Had you heard of the case before? Yeah, on the news. I think maybe somebody went on my rookie year, I think it was mentioned because it came over the radio or something. In 2016, at the start, did you attempt to obtain all the information that had been available in the case before? Yes. For instance, did you review the 9-1-1 tape? I did. For instance, did you review the crime scene? I did. For instance, did you review the autopsy and evidence collected at the autopsy? Yes. Did you review witness statements? Yes. I did. Interviews? I did. Photographs? Yes. Take a look back in the past, 2010, 2011, 2012, all the years in between the homicide and 2016. All the way through. What's going to be your job here today is take us on that relook. Right. Okay. 
So let's start. Uh, did you familiarize yourself with the background situation in 2010? What I mean by that, the status of Lorenzen and Cher's relationship, where each party was living, things like that. Mainly just from the case file, from the beginning of the missing persons report was really where we started. So that first page is where I started personally. Uh, were you familiar with the status of their marital relationship at the time? No. Okay. Were you familiar with where, or did you familiarize yourself with where Lorenz and Wright was living at the time? Yes. Uh, and what city was he living at the time? Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, or right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I gave you an address of 452 Tiaram, T I O R A M Lane. Are you familiar with that location? Yes. And what is that? That is where Lorenzen was living with two roommates. I'm going to pass you a series of five photographs. And if you can tell me what's pictured in each. Set them down, uh, face down, and fall in the desk in front of you. It's a, the first one is a Google Maps overhead view of uh, 4452 Tamron Lane, and then there's also highlighted an IHOP on here. Uh, suburb of Atlanta? Yes. Okay. Um, another one is just a further out view of that a Google Maps, and it has uh, the 452 Tamron Lane. And the other is the condo that Lorenzen was living in, which is the 45 or 452 Tamron Lane. Picture of the actual condo there at 452 Tamron Lane. Yes. Um, and then there's a like pulled back view of the apartment or the condo. Looks like it's from uh, in they're standing in the yard like across the street. And then the other is Google Maps, but are like a street maps almost of a uh, how far it is from AHOP to 452 Tamron Lane, and has like the directions for it. Your Honor, I introduce that whatever your Honor's preference with regard to collective or sequential. Mr. Thomas, any objections to this offer of proof? No. no. For the, record, for the record, exhibit number three would be what has been described by is it Detective Browning? Yes, sir. A Google map showing the general location of 452 T O Ram T I O R A M Lane. Map showing the location of 452 Teal Ram Lane, identified by Detective Browning as a city suburb outside of the city of Atlanta. Exhibit number four would be a wider view of an area photo showing the location of the address on Teal Ram, Teal Ram Lane. Exhibit five be a photograph showing what's described by Detective Browning as a condo located at this address 452 Teal Round Lane. Exhibit 6 be a photograph described by Detective Browning as a photograph showing the back of the condo at 452 Teal Round Lane. Exhibit 7 would be a what has been described by Officer Detective Browning as a street map showing a location, possible travel route between an IHOP and 452 T.O. Ram Lane. A street map, exhibit number 7. 
Taggart, you may proceed. As we go, you know, there's going to be a series of pictures, physical exhibits, uh, have permission to publish as we go. Now. Yes, sir, you may do so. Fifty-two. Oh, sorry. What, what is it? What's it's, the significance of it? This is where Lorenzen was living with two of his roommates. Where Lorenzen was living. Mm -hmm. and there also is an IHOP highlighted on here as well. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, Lorenzen was living with two of his roommates. Further out view, the same thing. Is that correct? Correct. City of Atlanta. <coughs> All right, what's this a picture of? Uh, that's going to be Lawrence and Wright's condo that he was living in. It looks like it has a, level, a ground floor level, there's a garage in the front, is that correct? Correct. And it's a three floor, a three floor condo or house. And my, I think it's two, but it just has that bottom. I think it has the bottom flooring, right? Well, I'm going to count that bottom floor in there. So, one, two, like three. the garage area, yes. This is someone taking a picture of the back of the condo. Okay, so this is the back of the same condo, of Lawrence's condo, out there in Atlanta. Correct. Did you also familiarize yourself with the location on Whispering Woods? I did. What is that? That is the residence that Cher Wright was living in. Let me pass you these two photographs and I should identify these. Uh, the first photo is going to be a picture of uh, the front of her residence in 2010. And then the other is going to be a photo of the pool and jacuzzi area in the backyard of the same residence. I don't know if you Mr. Aaron, Mr. Thomas, any objections to the offer? No objection. What's that address again, Officer Detective Browning? It's, uh, it's Whispering Woods. Whispering Woods. It's 35. 4530. 4530. Exhibit 8. Photograph showing a property at an address of 44530 Whispering Woods, described as the residence of Cheryl Wright, exhibit number eight. Exhibit number nine. Photographs described by Detective Browning as a pool at the address of 4530 Whispering Lane, exhibit number nine. May proceed, um, Mr. Hager, and you may publish those from the jury, please, sir. All right, uh, what area of town is this uh, house in detention? It's in Cardinal. Uh, is it in Shelby County? <coughs> yes. And from your review of the case file, who was living at the house at the time of the, the homicide? Uh, Cher Wright and her two children. At least two of the children? At least two of the children. Can you just fix your backyard?
those locations, did you familiarize yourself with other locations in Memphis? Yes. Uh, in particular, a location uh, that I'm going to call Cowlitz Cove. Correct. Tell the jury you know, what that is, where that is, what we're talking about there. Uh, that's where Lorenzen Wright was located. Um, deceased, which was at Callis Cutoff and Tournament Drive. And what, like, where is that in Memphis? Um, it's going to be right off the interstate there at um, Germantown Parkway, kind of just north of the interstate. Um, in Carterville, somewhere in Carterville. Carterville, Memphis. In Shelby County? Yes. Uh, near Hash Cross? Yes. Is this street a big street? I won't say big street. So is it a big street or a little street? No, it's a small little cut through. I think even back then it was more of a wooded kind of area that you cut through. Is, is it lined with houses, yes or no? At that time, no. Lined with businesses, yes or no? No. It would be fair to describe it as an undeveloped, yes or no? Undeveloped, yes. Small? Small. Yes. Dark. Yes. The area around it, immediately next to it, adjacent to it. Uh, can you describe that? Um, it's just a wooded area where the road cuts through. It's got uh, three-layered um, barbed wire fencing, and then it's just an open kind of got some open fields, and then the rest is just woods. Undeveloped? Undeveloped. Wooded? Wooded. But still in Shelby County? Yes, sir. So you familiarize yourself with his house in Atlanta, with Shara's house on Whisper Woods, with Cal's cutoff, where his body was found. Uh, how about where Mr. Billy Turner was living? 7250 German Creek Park. Correct. Yes. Uh, what area of town is his house located in? Somewhat close to the same area. Uh, uh, close just to west. Close to what same? Uh, uh, Callus Cut. So it's on the other side of the interstate, kind of towards the, it'd be more towards the west. Um, maybe two miles away. About two miles from Cal's Cutoff? I'd say maybe two, three miles. It's, it's not that far. And would it be fair to say that Shara's house was a bit further away than that? Yes. Let me pass you these two exhibits. What's the picture there? It's a, uh, it's a Google Maps picture and it's got a red dot signifying where Lorenz and Wright's remains were found on Callis Cut. And then there's a yellow dot for Billy Turner's house over on, uh, Ger was it German uh, Park or German Creek Park? German Creek, Creek Park. Park. And then Shara Wright's on Whispering Woods. And, and it's got a yellow dot. And underneath it? It's going to be a uh, Google Maps kind of, I guess you could say, zoomed in, and it's got a yellow dot for Billy Turner's house, a green dot for Planet Fitness, and then a red dot for where Lorenz and Wright's remains were found on Calista. Have those uh, states as one of these areas? Objections to uh, Perry and Mr. Thomas. Yeah, can you see those?
for the record exhibit number 10. It would be a, what's been described as a Google area shot by Detective Browning showing the locations of Billy Turner's house, Shara Wright's house, both marked by yellow dots, and a red dot marking the location where Lorenzo Rice remains were located. Exhibit number 10. Exhibit number 11 will be what's been described by Detective Brown, and it's a Google map showing the locations of Billy Turner's house, Planet Fitness, a green circle, yellow circle for Billy Turner's house, and a red circle for the location of Lorenzo Rice remains, exhibit number 11. May proceed, Mr. Hagerman. This is a day's guess right now, but uh, I think we can see what, what we need to see. What area, what area of Memphis we're looking at? Carterville, Shelby uh, County. Can you see that it's red dot on that exhibit? And I want to apologize to you. This is one of the hazards of technology. Um, a normal laser pointer, if you try to use that on that Samsung TV, would disappear. So otherwise, we'll give uh, Detective Browning a laser pointer and have a point to it, but it does not show up on that screen. And I do apologize to you. So if you need uh, to see it, feel free to reposition yourselves, um, but they try to describe for you what is shown on the photograph. Yes, sir. So what Ms. Hagman has given to you, that's the actual exhibit that you have within the jury room you start to deliberate. Everything has been admitted. You have it to look at as long as it's close as you want to. It's been shown as overhead just to conserve time, but what is in your hands now, exhibit 10, is actually also been shown on this screen, maybe better uh, to have you look at it as this testimony goes along. Ms. Hagman, you have so we're looking at an aerial view out in Carterville, parts of Memphis too, is that right? Yes. Uh, all in Shelby County? Right. Red dot, it's hard to see from where the jury is, but it's the, it's the top. Oh, correct. Of the dots are. Red dot, the reason Lorenzo Rice remains. Correct. So where's that at? That's going to be Callis Cut. Okay, that's that small road that you're talking about. Correct. To the left of it, there's a dot that reads Billy Turner's house. That's Mr. Turner's house at the time, is that correct? Yes. Turner's Creek Park. Yes. And then to the extreme right and lower is Sheriff Wright's house. Is that the house that we saw at Whisper Woods? That's correct. And for scale sake, you said Mr. Turner's house is about two miles from Cal's cutoff, is that right? Yeah, approximately. Making Miss Wright's house further away. Correct. She estimated maybe three or four times as far. Yes. She estimated about yes. three or four times as far. Yes. The next is a closer view, is that correct, Detective? Closer than the one we saw before? Yes. If I go to the extreme top right, the red dot reads the runs and rights remains. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And in this picture, is it even possible to see the woods that are next to the little cut off road uh, that you're talking about? Well, there's apartments there, but yes, where that dot is, I think actually it would be more to the right is where his remains are found. And then Billy Turner's residence is going to be just south, like southwest of that. Southwest of that, the yellow dot of uh, Billy Turner's house. Right. And the 
for some reason unknown to me. Why is there, <laughs> why is there a green dot for Planet Fitness? I do not know. That's probably just a mistake. I would assume. Uh, Planet Fitness didn't have any sort of role in this investigation. It did not. Right? It did not. July 18th, 2010. And for perspective's sake, we're here about the second. Lorenzen dies when? July 19th at 12.12 in the morning. All right, so the 18th, the day he comes in, he dies just 12 minutes after midnight the same day. Correct. Uh, dying basically the same day he came in. Correct. Except for 12 minutes. Correct. Were his whereabouts that day once he came to Memphis, uh, were they accounted for? They were. Did investigators speak to various people that he visited with? Yes. Uh, various people that saw him? Yes. Um, did investigators determine the last place he was that night? before Calvis cut off? Yes. Uh, and did they determine the last place he was before that? Yes. Right. So take his time frame wise. Where was Lorenzen right before he went to Calvis cut off? Uh, lifetime fitness. Right, you, you, you backed up on me too. You backed up to the first time. Uh, and that's fine. Let's start there. Uh, how was Lorenz's, uh, how was his presence at Lifetime Fitness documented? Uh, by his friend who gave him a ride to uh, the last place he was known to be, which was Whisper Woods. Why was he at Lifetime Fitness? Uh, he picked up his son, Lorenz and Jr. And about what time uh, did he leave Lifetime Fitness? So around 9.30, 9, 9.30. Around 9, 9.30. Who was with him when he left Lifetime Fitness? Uh, his frat brother, um, I think his frat brother's son, and then Lorenz, and Lorenz and Jr. All you, wrote. You say his fraternity brother, would that be Philip Dodson? Philip Dodson, yes. Uh, and his Dodson's son? Yes. Is that correct? Uh, and then Lorenz and Jr. Correct. Now how old was Lorenz and Jr. at the time? He's about 15. Do you know what Lorenzen Jr. had been doing up at Lifetime Fitness? He was playing basketball. Uh, do you uh, know where Philip Tyson, Lorenzen, and the two kids went after Lifetime Fitness? Yes. Where did they go? They went to uh, Cher's residence at Whispering Woods. Do you know about what time they arrived at Whispering Woods? Uh, it would have been like 10 minutes after that. Uh, that'd be fair to say in the 9.30, 9.40 range. Right around there. Less than three hours before that. Correct. From that point, is it fair to say that investigators don't speak to, can't locate, don't speak to anybody that saw the rims and right after that? Other than chair, right? Correct. Dropped off the house about 9.30, Correct. We're going to jump ahead two and a half hours, two hours and 45 minutes to 12, 12 a.m. Okay. 12 minutes after midnight. 
Why is that time important? That is when the 911 calls are received to, Ger to Germantown. And uh, tell us about that 911 call. It was a 911 call that was placed by Lorenzen to, that was routed to the Germantown dispatch. From Lorenzen's cell phone? From Lorenzen's cell phone. To Germantown dispatch? Correct. And have you reviewed that call once, twice, or many times? Many. Many times. <coughs> many times. Describe generally what we hear on that call. You hear uh, Lorenzen uh, kind of say, oh, goddamn, and you hear some gunshots, and then you hear somebody say something. It, it's in, been interpreted different by the different people that listen to it, but it almost sounds like, to me, get them, and then more gunshots, and then the phone. Hangs. A male voice? Correct. Lorenzen's voice, a male voice, and then whatever he said, and like you said, it's just hard to make it out. Correct. Another male voice. It sounds like another male voice. Right. And numerous gunshots. Correct. And tell us, I may have already told them, but tell us what Germantown did with that 911 call. They called his cellular phone back, and then I think that was it. That was it. It appears that that was there. They didn't research the location. They didn't put out a broadcast or whatever you want to call it, other law enforcement agencies. They didn't. No. It didn't appear that anything was done. Let me pass you this, ask you if you recognize this to be the novel one call. I know you to listen to it many times. Yes, this is a copy of one of the now. I don't know if we have that marked in the Evans this time. Spare Ms. Thomas, uh, any objections? No objections, Your Honor. This would be exhibit number 12. Described by Investigator Brown in SA 911 call. Placed on July 19, 2010. Exhibit number 12. supposed to be at uh, Sheriff's residence. And why was he supposed to be there? He was going to be picked up by one of his roommates and with his kids and they were going to go back to Atlanta. He and the kids had a ride back to Atlanta. That's correct. That next morning. 
That's correct. But he wasn't there. He was not there. But he wasn't reported missing. He was not. <laughs> not that morning. No. Not later that day. Not later that day. Was the sheriff right reported missing that night? No. Was the sheriff right reported missing that next morning? Did Shara Wright ever report missing? She did not. Who reported missing? Uh, his mother. That be Miss Deborah? Yes. Do you know how many days later until he was reported missing? Uh, two. It was on the 22nd of July, 2010. 22nd. Two or three days later, he's finally reported days. missing. Is that right? That's correct. That same day as he's reported missing, is his body found? No. Is it found the next day? It's not. We're now at the 24th or the 25th. Has anybody discovered this novel in one car yet? No. When does somebody discover this novel in one car? On the 27th. And it was the German town police, wasn't it? No. Who discovered the novel in one car? It was an investigator with the Carville Police Department. Correct. And what kind of case were they investigating? Missing persons. Lorenzo's missing person case? Correct. Once they discovered this 911 call, what was done? Uh, they contacted Germantown, um, one of their inspectors, and that inspector in turn, I guess, said he would figure out where the, if the call came through. And, they could see what all was done. Honestly. From there, are investigators able to do something with phones and location to try to figure out where this call came from? Correct, yes. And did they do that? They did. And what did that result in? Um, they had a basically a geographical area which was over uh, Hacks Cross, Callus Cut, and Turn Drive. What they do? They sent, uh, they, on the 28th, they got together and had a meeting, and then they had a search party go out and start searching that area around Callis Cut, Tournament Drive, and Winchester. And all. And we're going to get into the specifics when we see the pictures, the diagram, and the, and the evidence, but generally, what did they find? They found Lorenzo. They found Lorenzo. And if my math is right, this is at least nine days after this 911 call? Yes. a good sized stack of documents. Quickly, if you can go through them like you did before, place them one on top of each other face down, okay. and tell us what uh, gentlemen is looking This is going to be an aerial view of Callus Cut and where it's a photo taken um, where Lorenzen's body was looking. This is just another aerial view, but it's more zeroed in on the, uh, the road and where the fin and where the fencing is. Um, the next one is a uh, crime scene diagram. It shows where Lorenzen's body was located, but also the pieces of evidence that were collected by a crime scene. And then we have a picture of part of the Callus Cut Road and then where it appears to be where some 
barbed wire was cut. And then we have a zoomed in photo of just barbed wire and some grass in the background. We have a long view of callus cut and it looks about five rows of bob wire that's been missing from a metal pole, metal posting. We have a zero, like a zoomed in photo of just the metal posting where it appears that like, yes, yeah, so you've got some of the metal left of a, where some bob wire was cut. And then you have a metal posting where the bob wire is attached and it's zoomed in on it. You have an even closer view of the metal posting where the bob wire is attached or tied around. You have a photo taken from across the street and you've got multiple placards on the ground on callus cut. You have a zoomed in photo of those placards, about four placards, which was representing the evidence that crime scene found. We have a photo of a zoomed in placard labeled number two. We have a zoomed in photo of a placard labeled three, and there's a shell casing. You have just a different angle of the placards earlier, which is uh, the placards are labeled 4, 5, 6, and 12. And then you have a zoomed out photo of the same placards, but instead of 4, 5, 6, and 12, you, you also have 3 and 7 in there. And it's a long view of callus cut. And then there's a zoomed in photo of the road at Callus Cut and where the bob wire is, being, is missing. And then you have placards seven and eight. And then you have a zoomed out photo of all the placards that I just named. And then you have a photo of Lorenzen Wright when he was located, deceased. You have a zoomed out photo where Lorenz and Wright was located and then there's multiple placards around it. And then you have a zoomed in photo with a liquor bottle and then it has one placard labeled one. Thomas and or Ms. Perry, any objections to this next offer's uh, of proof? No objections, Thomas. Thank you. For the record, I hope I took sufficient notes. Exhibit number 13, the photograph described by Detective Browning as showing a area of the callus cut and where Lorenzo's right body was located, exhibit number 13. Exhibit number 14. Photographs describe a Detective Browning as showing a closer view. Of the road and fenced area, exhibit number 14. Exhibit number 15. <coughs> the crime scene diagram not to scale. Showing the location of where Mr. Wright's body was found and other marks showing placards or items that were located relative to the crime scene exhibit 
number fifteen. Exhibit number 16 will be a photograph described by Detective Browning as showing this cow was cut and where Bob Wire was located. Cut, exhibit number 16. Exhibit number 17 will be a photograph described by Detective Browning as showing a closer view. Zoomed in view of Bob Barbed Wire at his address. Location of Cal was cut, exhibit number 17. Exhibit number 18. The photograph described by Detective Brown and is showing a longer view of Cal is cut with missing Bob Barbed Wire, exhibit 18. Exhibit number 19 is photographs described by Detective Browning as showing metal posts and remnants of barbed wire. Exhibit 19. Exhibit 20. Photographs described by Detective Browning as showing metal posts with attached barbed wire. Exhibit 20. Exhibit number 21 is a closer view of a barbed wire. Exhibit 21. Exhibit 22 is photographs described by Detective Browning as showing several evidence placards. Exhibit 22. Exhibit number 23 is photographs described by Detective Brown and is showing a zoomed in view. It's 23, Deputy Smith. Yes, sir. A zoomed in view of placards 4, 5, and 12. Exhibit 23. 23, yes sir. Exhibit number 24, photograph showing a placard or item 2, exhibit 24. Exhibit number 25 is a photograph showing a placard marking crime scene evidence is shown as placard 3, exhibit 25. Exhibit number 26, photograph showing a different view, different angle of placards 5, 6, sorry, put them in order, 4, 5, 6, and 12. Exhibit 26. Exhibit number 27 is a photograph described by Officer Browning as showing placards 3, 4, and 6, among others. Exhibit number 27. Exhibit number 28. Photograph described by Officer Browning as showing placards or items 7 and 8. Exhibit 28. Exhibit number 29 is a photograph described by Detective Browning as showing a zoomed out angle of all placards. Exhibit 29. Exhibit 
exhibit number 30, photograph described by Detective Browning as showing the body, decomposing body of Lorenzen Wright, exhibit number 30. Exhibit number 31, photograph described as showing placards of placards one, two, three, five, appears to be 10, and also the body of, zoomed out body of Lorenzen Wright, exhibit number 31. Exhibit number 32 is placard number one, described by Detective Brown, and it's showing a zoomed in photo of a, what appears to be a alcoholic or liquor bottle. Placard number one, exhibit number 32. I think I took adequate notes. Hope I described it properly, Mr. Hyker. Uh, you, you may proceed. Hope you show us in a second. Uh, yes, sir. Some of the pictures we're going to see, uh, Detective, or that we talked about already, involves bullet casings. Is that correct? That's correct. Let me pass you these three envelopes. Pass you if you recognize these. I do. And you can just um, one by one describe what's contained in each. Um, the first one's going to be five spent 8.35 B S and B bullet casings, one spent nine millimeter bullet casing, and one spent 380 bullet casing. And uh, where are those collected at? This is going to be collected at Tournament Drive and Callus Cut. Uh, we have that. We may want to do these one by one by one since these are envelopes. Uh, we have that in the notes. Perry, I know Mr. Um, Thomas had objection to this, and that's all for approval. No objection. For the record, exhibit 33 profit and evidence envelope in the contents therein described by Officer Detective Browning. Five spent 8.35. Is that a B, Officer Browning? B as in boy? Yes. 8.35 B uh, bullet casings. One spent 9 millimeter bullet casing. And one spent 380 bullet casing. Exhibit number 33, the envelopes and the contents therein. The next envelope you have in your hand, um, Tech Browning, is? Um, it's going to be nine spent, nine millimeter Luger casings. Okay, this callus cut and tournament drive. Sir, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas, so Mr. Perry, I apologize. Any objections to this next offer of proof? No objection. This would be exhibit number 34, described by Detective Brown as nine spent nine millimeter Luger, L U G E R, shell casings. Exhibit number 34. Hagerman, you may proceed. Last envelope. It, the last envelope is going to be three spent bullets. And they, those were collected at Cal's cut off and tournament drive. Well, for those of those, this next offer. Ms. Carol, Ms. Thomas, any objections to this next offer of proof? No objection. This will be exhibit number 35, described by Detective Browning as uh, three spent bullets. Recovered at this location, a cow was cut off. Cow for the record C A L L I S cut off C U T O F F Road, west of Tournament Drive, exhibit number 35, three spent 
bullets. Skip away from the crime scene just for a second. To your knowledge, were bullets and bullet fragments recovered from the body of Lorenzo Reddick? Yes. We you these three envelopes, now she can identify these three. The first one's going to be a bullet fragment from the right arm of Lorenzen. Thomas was Perry. Any objections to this next offer? No, yeah. Um, without objection, to exhibit number 36. Described by Detective Browning. That's a bullet fragment recovered from the right arm. Of uh, Lorenzen Wright. This the location of recovery is 1060 Madison Regional One. Sorry, I apologize. It's not Regional One. That's the um, Shelby County Regional Forensic Center, or I believe the Regional Medical. It's changed names a few times. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Regional One Medical Center's office, exhibit number 38, a bullet fragment recovered from. 36, can't read my writing. 36, a bullet fragment recovered from Lorenzo Wright's right arm. Mr. Hagman, you may proceed. Proceed to the next one. It's uh, one bullet from chest. Bullet from Lorenzo Wright's chest? Correct. Ms. Perry, Ms. any objections? No objections. This will be exhibit number 37. 37. Envelopes and the contents thereof described by Detective Browning as one bullet recovered from the chest of Lorenzo Wright. And again, the location of recovery is 1060 Madison Avenue, exhibit number 37. Ms. Hagerman, you may proceed. The last one. It's going to be a one bullet jacket from head. Of that Ms. Perry and or Mr. Thomas, any objections? No, yeah. This will be exhibit number 38. Proven evidence envelope and the contents therein described as one bullet jacket from the head of Lorenzo Wright recovered at 1060 Madison Avenue, exhibit number 38, bullet from head. That's the case amongst yourselves with anyone else. Take Brown, we'll have you step down from the witness stand during a recess. You cannot discuss your testimony with anyone over the recess. Sir. Thank you, sir. Anything else we need to address while we are going to take this recess? We call the quarter to recess. Everyone can remain seated. Let's stand to recess. Please.